So in this video, we're going to talk about the area between curves. And, and this is the idea that, uh, you know, we have some, you know, two functions and, uh, you know, maybe this is f of x on the top. Maybe this is g of x on the bottom, right? Integration is from A to B, right? And this is region type one, which just means that we're integrating along the x axis. So if we're inter integrating along the x axis, for the area between curves, the integral is simply given uh, from a to b of f of x minus g of x, all right? And we attach our dx here. And this is just saying we take the integral of the upper function, subtract it from the integral of the lower function, all right? And in other words, to, 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 for simplifying assumptions, we could say this is the integral from a to b of the upper function, and maybe I'll just write function as f of x minus the lower function, dx. And this is all this is saying. Now, reason type two, it's the same thing. The only difference now is that we're integrating along the y-axis. So we're walking this path. In the first part, in the, in the in, in type region type one, we're walking along the x-axis and saying, okay, well, this is your top function, this is your bottom function here. We're not walking along the x-axis anymore. We're actually walking along the y. So you could see that v of y would be my top, u of y would be my bottom. So again, the integration for this is given from c to d of v, well, this is v of y minus u of y and dy, be careful. Whenever you're integrating along y, make sure you attach a dy here and not dx, right? Your differential should be the same as what you're taking uh, the integral of. So just be careful. So with that being said, let's look at a couple problems. So maybe we're given this here and, we're, and they ask us to find the area between the curves of y is equal to x squared and y is equal to x plus 2. Well, typically in, in the class, they will not give you any function that you really don't know what it looks like. Now, it behooves you to you know, draw the picture for the function, uh, for the functions to see, to, to see what's going on. But I like to think of it as I don't need it. You know, if I could somehow find the limits of integration mathematically, then I'm fine. You know, and sometimes you draw the pictures and they're kind of, they kind of, they're kind of confusing. So here's what I like to do. In this case, notice that our, our limits are not given. So what we could actually do is set these two functions equal to each other. So if I set x squared is equal to x plus 2, right? If I set that to be the problem, then x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0, right? So this now becomes a polynomial, all right? And if I factor this, this is just x minus 2, x plus 1, and that's equal to 0, yes? So my limits of integration are x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 1. Now to find which one your which one is your upper curve, well, since we're given the picture here, let's walk. So if I'm walking along the x-axis, I see that the upper curve is given by this line y is equal to x plus 2. Right? So therefore my lower line is given by y is equal to x squared. But what if you didn't feel like drawing the picture? What if somehow you just hate drawing the picture? You just want to get straight to the integral, like how you know I like to do it. Well, what you can actually do is that once you find the limits of integration, you could pick any two points between these two points and plug it in into the functions to see which one gives you the higher number. So therefore, zero is between two and negative one. So let's plug zero in for x is equal to two and zero in for x is equal to, for y is equal to one plus two, uh, x plus two. So if I plug zero into this, I get zero. If I plug zero into this, I get two. So therefore, this tells me that this has to be my upper function, All right? So this is how you, you, you know, you could provide, you could get the upper function without even doing all that hard work um, with drawing the functions if you don't feel like to. So once that is set, then this now becomes our integral of negative one to two, right? The upper function minus lower, lower function. So we just said the upper function is x plus two, and we're gonna subtract that from x squared, and we attach our dx. All right now this just becomes a simple integral <coughs> where if we integrate uh i'm gonna switch my orders around because i like having my highest you know powers first so this is negative x squared plus x plus 2 dx 
And now if I take my integral, this becomes uh, negative x cubed over, over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x. And this is all in, uh, integrated from uh, negative 1 to 2. All right. So plugging everything in, uh, we start with the upper uh, upper number first. So parentheses 2 cubed over 3 plus 2 times 2 over 2 plus 2 times 2. All I'm doing is just plugging in my upper number first. All right, parentheses. I'm going to subtract that from this whole lower number now. So this becomes negative, negative 1 cubed over 2 plus negative 1 squared over 2 plus 2 times negative 1. All right, now I have all my numbers in. We could simplify this a little bit better. So again, negative 2, uh, 2 cubed is 8 over 3. So I have a negative 1 8 here. Yes. 2, 2 is 4. Uh, 4 divided by 2 is just 2. Plus 2 times 4 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. All right. So we have all this in parentheses minus, well, again, negative one third, negative one cubed is just negative one. Negative one times negative one is just positive one. So this is a positive one third uh, uh, plus, again, negative squared is going to give me just one, one half minus two times negative, uh, minus uh, two times negative one is just negative two. All right. And this just simply becomes, simply becomes a matter of you know, calculations, right? So negative eight over three uh, plus uh, six over three. I got to multiply here also. Yes. All right, because this is six, but again, we'll get a common denominator to add and this becomes minus. Okay, well, if I, if I add one, one third plus one half minus two, that is just uh, negative seven, six. Yes. Again, when I do my inner, when I do my math here, well, three times six, that's uh, uh, that and that. So this will give me uh, 10 over three, right? When you do the math for that, and this is minus, minus a seven over six, right? So again, common denominator, so I can multiply by two here, two here. So this becomes 20 plus seven divided by six. So this is just 27 over six, right? And I could simplify this as nine over two. And that would be my interval.